Hi there, it's Amara, musician among other things, and today I'm back with my hubby to talk a little bit about the little gap of time that we haven't documented yet, which is between mm -hmm. our dating yeah. phase and our marriage. So our engagement mm -hmm. and that two and a half months after that, before the wedding. <laughs> Such a long period of time, long yeah. period of time. So we kind of left off in the kind of dating, meeting, dating, courtship type video in April or so. And April was the month that we got engaged. So when, yeah. first of all, when did you get my ring size? Oh, I actually a week, remember, two weeks into dating? I actually remember the very day he got my ring size uh technically we're official on sunday so it was mm -hmm. a week and a day into dating because it was monday night yes. in the parking lot mm -hmm. at the school and yeah that was where you asked my ring size and what was your logic in that i remember um well you thinking sorry i get bothered with hair on people <laughs> we're good um <clears throat> well my logic was um might as well ask early if nothing comes of it, then, like, I'm just the weird guy who, <laughs> like, I'll be the story later on where you're like, yeah, this guy I was dating one time, like, asked me my ring size, like, a weekend, like, freaking weirdo. <laughs> if it does work out, like, I, it was always, like, not that I'm, like, super planny, but it was always, that was always one thing, like, the hang up of, like, well, I want to buy a ring, but rings come in sizes, like. And you don't want to drop hints, like, too close exactly. to the actual engagement. Yeah, I, yep, I was getting there. And, yeah. Um. Yeah, so the idea was, you know, if we've been dating for six months or a year or something, and then I'm like, oh, by the way, what's your ring size? You know, I don't know. <laughs> like, then the, the jig is up, sort of, and everyone, and she's on high alert, you know, and so it's like, eh. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about doing, or like, I think a lot of people do, is you go to a mo the mom or a sister or something like that and try and figure out her, mm -hmm. or steal some of her jewelry, because petty theft is always good, too. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so ask your ring size about, yeah, a weekend, I guess. Yeah, weekend so day. when did you actually get the ring? Because I know oh. that... So we were, let's see, two and a half months? No. How long into dating were we when we got engaged? We got we started dating on February 20th. Correct. And we, and got, we engaged. got engaged on April 7th. Yep. So that'd be so it's, a month and a half, not even. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so month it's and like half. six. Actually, oh, about, that's about right. That's right. It was six and a half weeks. I remember now. Six and a half weeks. So when did you get the ring? Because getting rings take time. Yeah, I don't know exactly when I got the ring, like, date-wise. I don't, my brain doesn't work like that. Had we gone to um, your families yet? Yes. So, had we yep. gone to your sisters yet? I don't know. So, so, we went to his families two weeks in, we went to his sisters four weeks in. I would say, I had the, I had the ring for several weeks before I proposed. Wow. Um, so, I proposed, what, April 7th? Yep. Yeah, so I'd say... In the March, late teens or March twenties, somewhere in there. So you must have ordered that thing like. They came pretty. A quick. few weeks in, three, they came pretty three, quick. maybe four weeks into dating. So. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that was, was a that was a um, a tense situation too, um, which is really fun. Like guys, if you haven't designed a engagement ring, it's actually really fun, like and, and really interesting to do. Um, rather than just going and buying one somewhere, if you kind of know a little bit of her style, that was like, for us, numerous days, I would sit after work and like, design rings, because a lot of websites you can do that, and a lot of jewelers do that, but anyways. Um, but I ordered it to, and it wouldn't come to my P.O. box, um, and I had an apartment, and so I ordered it to my apartment, and in the past, I don't know why I did this looking back on it, like why I didn't get it shipped somewhere else, like the school or something, but, um, I shipped it to my apartment and in, in, in the past uh, packages hadn't gotten to me. So I had to like contact the carrier, whoever it was, USPS or FedEx or UPS or whatever, and like track it down and sometimes get it resent. And it's sometimes a bit a big hassle. And so I was, ho it even told me like deli or scheduled delivery time was going to be after school. So I was like, I can run home and like hopefully be there when the dude shows up. But I'm at school and I get the email that it, had been delivered or whatever and so i'm like oh my gosh so i run home after work and i there's like a staircase and i'm like the first door on the right once you get onto the or my my floor 
and I like get up the staircase and I'm like, please, as I turn this corner, please let a box be there. Like hopefully one of my neighbors, you know, wasn't uh, what they call it, porch mm -hmm. pirating or whatever, or snatched it or like it just got misplaced somewhere and I was freaking out and I just turned and it was right there and I was like, huh. oh, thank you Lord. <laughs> and looking back on it, I still don't know why I did that, but I mean, it worked out anyways. And so I had yeah. it for several weeks and then was trying to decide when I wanted to ask. And I talked to a lot of people in my life. Um, I had been really about, honestly, throughout the dating process. And my brother-in-law, who uh, is married to my older sister, who's a phenomenal man. Um, and I've sometimes you bounce ideas or just run things by him, um, whether it's scripturally or what his findings are on things. Um, and then my dad, who I wouldn't say we're like super, super close. Like we don't talk all the time, but I know that he would um, not get like wrapped up in uh, too much of the emotion of things like oh yeah, you're in love, go for it, you know, stuff like that. But he would think about it. And and I knew basically what he was going to say is just to be prayerful and mindful, basically was the idea. And then a few other just mentors at work um, who were men that I, who I knew had really good marriages um, and who just were great teachers and great people. Um, and so kind of ran it by them and, and basically kept getting sort of the same thing. Um, a similar theme of if this is the girl that you... If she is who she said, who you think she is, and it always just, she was always the same person, you know, there wasn't any major red flags, anything like that. And I super enjoyed her, and I knew I had the rose colored glasses on at the time, infatuation and all that, and hormones, and she's just the best ever, which she still is. Um, but they kept kind of saying, you know, there doesn't have to be a time frame. That, that idea kind of kept coming up, like, it doesn't have to be a year, doesn't have to be six months, um, the Lord will guide you, and you'll know. And so I would kind of sat down one evening and kind of game planned and spent some time in prayer. And originally it was going to be, I think I originally set the date for late in May. Because mm -hmm. that would have given us February, March, April, May. It would have three whole months. Wow. Uh, three <laughs> months. Um, but then it, again, it just kind of kept coming up. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, why, why does it have to be May? Um, Which is so interesting because like... I wouldn't say that'd be your average advice from everyone. Like, yeah, rush and get engaged, right? But like, yeah, I, and then I feel like God that, was, yeah, yeah. But I feel like God was talking to you through your mentors, and mm -hmm. He gave your mentors peace to say these things, and it was constantly being confirmed for you, yep. and that you know helped mm -hmm. you come to the decision even quicker. Yeah. But then you also had some other confirmations right before too right? oh yeah like the day of is that what you're talking about yeah i guess so i guess we gotta start with um because you had already planned the day right sort of yeah yeah so i had the idea um so basically what it was going to look like was we were going to go back to where we had our first first real date i guess where we, we sat we there's were, a bench we were gonna have a picnic i think yeah somewhere nearby well, yeah, it, so the yeah. idea was we were, yeah, we were going to picnic outside. I don't remember where I had the picnic planned for necessarily. But anyway, so we were going to go go on a picnic outdoors. It's going to be beautiful. I mean, you know, sandwiches and fruit and all this wonderful stuff. And then we would walk to the bench that we had this really, really long conversation on, which was our first date, where mm -hmm. we kind of laid a bunch of stuff out there um, and were, yeah, very, very honest with each other and stuff. So anyways, kind of our first date day. Yeah. Um, and so there's this bench that we sat on, and so I was going to have this sign on the bench that said, will you marry me, basically, um, and all that stuff. And this is when she saw and it, she turned around and everything. it overlooks the river. Yeah, and it's a beautiful spot. It's a very beautiful spot. Um, however, well, yeah, see, that same day, I, what I would say, too, um, I hadn't asked her parents or her father specifically for, you know, her hand in marriage, because um, I'm old school like that, I guess. Um, but I so I'll set up a meeting with them. Um, and it was actually, I think, hoping to meet with them sooner. I can't remember what happened, but I want—I did want both of them to be there. Mm -hmm. um, both your mom and your dad. And so it worked out where I was at your place um, for the morning, I think. Then you went to work. Yep. Remember correctly. And then I, like, got in my car. And I think I did leave. I think I went shopping. Um, so I kind of left as you left or followed you out, sort of. And then I went to Walmart, bought some supplies, like poster board, markers, um, a basket, 
a few things you know, that I need for the picnic that I didn't have. Um, and then came back, met with your parents, and uh, it was actually not that bad. Like, I, that was one thing, like, in my mind was always going to be a rough thing, was, like, <laughs> asking the dad for permission to marry his daughter. But since our first conversation when we started dating, like, when I asked <laughs> to court or date his daughter... My dad so, asked every question. It was a in very that. lengthy, um, conversation. revealing conversation, and so most of the, almost all the big questions were kind of out of the way already, and I had known them probably at this point. I mean, almost going on, not quite a year, but I had known them for longer, eight it, months it was or something like that. To, you met them in the summer, yeah. So yeah. eight months or so. Uh, but yeah, and so that was pretty simple and then they were kind of like yeah sure you know and they're pretty hands-off though too where it was like if you guys think this is what the lord wants for you and things like then you have our blessing it wasn't like yes you can marry my daughter like wasn't quite like that which was <laughs> cool but then i think your mom asked remember, but i think your mom asked so when are you gonna ask and i was like oh today and they were like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> I guess that makes, like, the secret keeping easy. So, so we did skip the little part in the morning, because I remember that you, in the morning, you were kind oh, of arranging sure. oh, things. Oh, I got you, got you, got you. You were arranging things with a couple students who were going to take yep, some pictures. Sorry, I did and gloss then over that. Just my best off. friend, who was going to take pictures, you were meeting with certain people, and then, like... Also, I wanted to say that he also did my dishes that day. I don't know how oh, or yeah. when, but he just did so much in one day. I saw him on two separate occasions that day. Mm -hmm. And it was just like boom, 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 to-do list until yeah. the evening. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, so in the morning, you yeah, went so for a walk or a run or something. Morning of, I went for a run, and I was a little conflicted. Because um, part of me... Um, like the logical side was like this is really fast mm -hmm. um are you sure like this is what you're supposed to be doing and you're not kind of again letting your heart or like your emotions um get away with you and kind of lead you into this because marriage is a big deal yeah like massively big deal and neither of us like really believe in divorce mm -hmm. um except for in very very few circumstances and so it was like this is kind of it like not nail in the coffin but in one sense, nail in the coffin to your singleness and some realm of selfishness. Like, is mm -hmm. being with someone and in a committed relationship, like, you give up things, you make decisions that you wouldn't when you were single and stuff like that. And so I went for a run and, yeah, it was just like my head was in turmoil, which actually made the run pretty easy because I didn't really think about how tired I was and things <laughs> like that. And so, but it was like, <sighs> Lord, I kind of like, I don't do this very often, but it was like my Gideon moment, sort of, of like putting the fleece before the Lord and like, give me a sign, sort of. And I felt even conflicted doing that. We'll get into, you know, that's whole theology and, <laughs> and things there with the relationship with God. But uh, there was a group of deer that we had seen several times mm -hmm. um, that would kind of frequent this trail. And I saw them numerous mornings. And so it was something along the lines of um, don't have them be there when I go out, which is normally when I would see them, but have them there when I come back. Some type of scenario um, to confirm. Yep. Yeah. And so I'll run out and then on my way out on this trail, a few miles, then I'll turn around and come back um, to my, head back to my apartment. And on my way back, the deer will be there if the Lord really wants me to ask today, basically. And the deer weren't there. But um, there was a rabbit that jumped out in front of me and sat on the trail and then kind of ran in front of me on the trail and then off into the and bushes. that's something you didn't normally see. And No, and this was the first rabbit I'd ever seen out running. I'd seen lots of animals. Mm -hmm. uh, several deer, um, uh, squirrels, of course, like I think even a raccoon one time, porcupine, like lots of cr critters, um, but never a rabbit. And Amra, um, if you don't know, uh, used to raise and breed rabbits and show them. And will um, be again. And will be and again. And it's something I didn't realize that you knew about me so much. Like I hadn't had rabbits for years at mm. that point, but I still talked about them so much and like my yeah. experience with them. So it's definitely something that he associated with me. Yeah, it was like a very symbol specifically. Of, of you in one sense. And I love them. They're a passion of mine. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so whether it was coincidence or not, it was like, it was almost like I'd asked kind of for a sign 
And the Lord was like, well, that's a little lame sign because you see those deer all the time. <laughs> How about like a rabbit, which you've never seen um, out running before. And for some reason, I don't know. The importance is that you felt instantly. Yes. That that and so was I had a peace. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And it was like all the doubts and like worries were just gone. And it was like, all right, this is what I'm supposed to do today. And so yeah. that I could go in with that. Um, and so I went back, showered, I think, quick. So then, like you said, I had set up with a few people. I had three people I was contacting about the day. Because I knew one thing that Am wanted was to get pictures of the day. Um, and I knew that was going to be a little bit difficult. Because, like, for one, I'm not a photographer. And I kind of want to be in the moment. So I don't want to be, like, holding my phone or whatever while oh, it's no. happening. <laughs> um, at the same time, like, if you're going to get someone to take pictures, like, they have to know what's going on. They have to be in a place where they're not, like, obvious. Um, or I had to get someone she didn't know. Um, and so I had two students uh, at the time who were juniors. I, I think so. Know. Yeah, something like that. Aiden and Micah, if you're watching, you know what you were at the time. <laughs> um, but they agreed to come out because she didn't know them. I'd seen them before, but like would recognize them in public. Probably. So if I saw them like on the trail or something, yeah, it I wasn't going to be like, oh, what's up? Yeah. yeah. And so they were going to sneak and get some pictures, um, and they had some, uh, f for some decent cameras, and then her best friend, Maggie, who mm -hmm. lived, actually just, really like, nearby, really close, mm -hmm. um, she would also be there to get it from a different angle, and so her job was a little bit more, um, stressful or whatever, because she had to stay out of sight, mm -hmm. like, and stay hidden, because she would have obviously yeah. recognized her best friend. Anyway, so I met with Maggie that morning, um, after my run and shower and stuff, and then kind of went over the whole plan, she was all for it, obviously. Um, and then my students, we set up a time that I would meet them briefly before. Like uh, right I, before I you brought got, me out kind yeah, of. Exactly. So I the day it was like, it was like, you went Very on your scheduled. run, you met with Maggie, you came over to my house mm -hmm. for a couple hours before I went to work. I went shopping. I went to work and then you went shopping, came back, talked yep. to my parents, yep. washed my dishes, yep. That's good. met with the students and then I was done with work. Yes. I came to your house and we went out for our picnic, but it was a rainy day. It was, it was rainy, day. rainy almost all day. So we didn't really get to go out in the woods for our picnic. We were in yes. the car. And so he's like, well, I was thinking I still want to do a picnic. So let's just do like a car picnic. And I was like, oh, that's fine. We'll do yeah. that. And then he ends up parking at a certain point, which is accessible to where he wanted to propose. But there's like no view or anything and I'm just, just like trees in front of you. Like. I'm just like, what? Okay. I mean, I don't mind it, but I, I think I gently recommended like, oh, we could go to this other section where there's like a pretty view and he's like, like no, no, I wanna be here. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah. so we ate. And also that day I was taking a long time. Like I was eating a lot of food. I was so hungry. Mm -hmm. And normally I wasn't always so hungry, but I was just kinda eating and you're just burning up with nerves. Yeah, and I I'm, wasn't hungry at all. And he wasn't eat. Yeah, which was, I didn't even think anything of it, but you were not hungry. Yeah, and obviously. you're normally always hungry. So for some reason that didn't tip me off. I had absolutely no idea it was happening this day. I had no idea at all. He mm. handled himself really well, didn't give anything away. And then I was like noticing that the rain had let up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I should hurry up and finish eating so that we can like go out for a little little walk yeah. or whatever before the rain starts again and so thankfully like I think God was working in my head he's like all right do this now do this to make it all work together hmm. and so I finished up eating really quick and then we went out and walked the trail to that special spot yes again I was completely caught off guard I had no idea so I was completely surprised I definitely thought it was going to happen soon hmm. but I had no inkling it was happening okay. that day and so I come and I walk and I see something on the bench and I'm like, huh? And I turn and I look, it says, will you marry me? And I turn around and I see photographers emerging from the, the woods, woods and I'm like, okay, this is real. <laughs> and um, you had a little speech and I don't remember it, me but it was, it, was it was sweet, it was short, it was beautiful. And he asked me to marry him and I said, yes. And then we had saved our first kiss for engagement. So mm -hmm. 
I was like ready to kiss him at that point. He wanted to ask first, but I didn't let, <laughs> let him ask first. Yeah. I just kind of went for it. it. Um, it was such a magical moment for sure. And I looked and saw that Maggie was there and I was like, oh, it's so awesome that she got to be a part of it. Cause she's at the time and, and even still now one of my dearest friends. Yeah. And so it was just cool that she was there. Yeah, and had kind of been at sort of the start of she kind of was a part of one of our us being together yeah. at the beginning too so it was yeah it was awesome what was your perspective in that moment were you like super nervous or you were yeah it's just kind of all a blur point? i don't know if anyone else can relate to that if guys proposed <laughs> or yeah i can remember like all the lead up and like the nervousness like i said i wasn't hungry um and then i was like trying to be uh, again, not giving anything away, but like excited, obviously. So try not to like walk too fast. And I was like yeah. texting um, the students and Maggie, letting them know like ETA yeah. three minutes. I timed out how far, how long the walk was and I from our know, spot to like our parking place. I don't know so, how I didn't notice that you were on your phone because at the time we like pretty much were never on our phone around yeah. each other. And I wasn't on my phone much. Yeah. But it was like just really quick. Like somehow text, he then. was like I I didn't notice a single sign to make me suspicious mm -hmm. at all. But yeah. And then... And then, yeah, then it's kind of all a blur. Oh, I remember the rest because after, like, oh. pretty much right after I said yes and I was settling down and it had been, like, pictures. five, ten minutes, it started pouring. Pouring. Like, pouring. <laughs> Absolutely pouring. And so we're just racing back to the car. We got completely soaked by that point. Running and giggling. And it was, it was kind of special. I don't know. Yeah. For those who don't know, our wedding was also raining all day, so I don't know why the rain just follows rain us for our special events. But so then we went back to your apartment. I we took a couple selfies and yep. I sent them to some family and friends, told them the news, and I think we just kind of enjoyed the evening. Yeah. And chilled. We didn't start any. I think maybe we'd started talking about about when we'd want to have the wedding, mm -hmm. but we didn't set a date or anything. I don't think. No. Oh no. no. Mm mm. So then, yeah, that was really a great proposal for sure. And then this leads us to our two and a half months of engagement, which basically was almost constant wedding planning almost every weekend. Although I do remember specifically two weekends off mm -hmm. where we still had like dates and didn't really focus on it. Yeah. And it was 10 and a half weeks. So that means like, eight weekends out of 10 or something we mm -hmm. were planning and I was planning some throughout the week as well but we tried to keep it to more of a yeah. specific time so it wasn't taking over everything we were doing premarital counseling we were reading books together um, reading in books. preparation for marriage mm -hmm. um, both the emotional and spiritual change and the physical changes and all that we were preparing for and <laughs> we were also eventually car shopping and house hunting yeah. all within the same 10 and a half weeks <laughs> um kind of shortly after we got engaged a few weeks maybe my i hit a deer with my car mm -hmm. and shortly after that his car started <laughs> not working yeah, it had minor minor card minor issues but then a whole ball joint basically went on the front and yeah. was like undrivable it wasn't worth the expensive repairs yeah for him anyway and so during this time and I don't even I can't even fathom how we did all of this but we did it was very busy I grew a gray hair like I'm telling you guys but we did it and I remember just thinking wow like all the stuff we're doing we're working together so well as a team <laughs> like a well-oiled machine and I didn't feel stressed I was still super excited about everything so um, we got a car mm -hmm. Um, probably maybe like four or four or five weeks in for you. Yeah. And I remember okay. I paid my money cash for it and yes. I didn't even think about it. I was just like, this is our car. I don't even think I put my name on it yet. Or I don't know. Maybe I did. Thank you. Okay. So I put my maiden name on there, but it was just weird that I didn't even think about it. I think we were just so set toward marriage that just wasn't a thought in my mind mm -hmm. um we ended up setting the date for the wedding to be june 20th so it gave us 10 and a half weeks like i'd already yeah. said and i think we 
started house hunting in May or even a little earlier. Yeah, it may have been a little earlier. And the reason for that was you had already kind of wanted a house this sum that summer. Yes. And I knew that if we were going to be married, we needed a place to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even though we could have made it in our spaces or one of our spaces for a short time, it was not ideal for long term. Mm -hmm. So we started house hunting and that can take a really long time. And we didn't quite realize all the paperwork, all everything that was required. And we looked at one house, didn't make an offer. We looked at another one and that was our house and we were accept our offer was accepted the day after we put it in yep. so like i really feel like god was on our side for that too mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. sped along the process and we were able to close the day we got home from our honeymoon yes so all of that fell into place very quickly from may to july mm -hmm. july 1st is when we moved in yeah so um and then, yes, yeah, so we did premarital counseling sessions, probably at least like six, maybe Something more. Like yeah, we read, we read seven. two books. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the wedding planning and honeymoon planning, because mm -hmm. we did go on a 10 day uh, honeymoon mm -hmm. to California, California right after our wedding. So yeah, everything just fell into place so perfectly mm -hmm. and couldn't have been more laid out for us even how last minute everything was we were able to find our vendors we were able to find our location mm -hmm. for the wedding and our wedding was the one day all spring and summer basically that rained all <laughs> yeah. day like it was such a dry year but our wedding was a rainy day and if you've seen our wedding video it was beautiful it was. i mean we got some pictures outside even with an umbrella and it mm -hmm. was really sweet yeah but what was your experience of that engagement period? How did that feel for you? Because you I were... Yeah, I never felt overwhelmed. Like, it yeah. was a lot. Um, and we... And you... I mean, you're awesome with, like, organization and stuff. And so we had sat down and it was like, hey, these are all the things we need. Oh, we talked about and finances, too. Yes. Um, and that and reminded me, too, when you brought that up, of even paying for the vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. And this isn't, like, an advice video, but if you want to bless... <laughs> Um, someone that you would fall in love with and end up being betrothed to or engaged to or end up married to. Um, of course, there's a lot of things you can do, but finances is huge. Um, oh, I remember yeah. this st statistic, but like so many marriages fail because of finances and financial stress and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so just because you have debt doesn't mean you can't get married. Now, there will be some people that tell you that. I don't know if I would. I'm not a financial guru or a marriage counselor <laughs> either. So not my world, but um, the number doesn't matter. But there was a time where during the engagement, you sat down and were like, this is how much I have saved up. And I had a decent chunk of savings, but nothing compared to what she had. And so both of us came in with no debt um, and thousands of dollars in the bank, um, yeah, which was awesome. I think it had been a couple weeks or so into engagement where yeah. you were kind of, like you said, crunching numbers, trying to yes. see how things were going to yeah. work. Because I knew, of course, goals. how much I had. And I knew she had some, but I didn't know. And so it was yeah. like... Ooh, we're going to be like, and we were talking about cost of the wedding and the honeymoon yeah, um, and putting a down payment on a house. And so it was like, and so I was like pretty much at peace about that. Cause I knew what I had and, but then I realized, okay, so he doesn't know. And it was kind of like a fun little gift, <laughs> secret, whatever. Yeah. Like I didn't pay, I, I had free college and I've been working for years. So I had the opportunity to save where he had to pay his way through four years worth of college and programs and stuff. So like the fact that you had savings was incredible too. Like he had savings. Um, but I just remember like, I was like, well, you write down yours first. So I was like, <laughs> write down your number. And then I started writing mine. And <laughs> I just remember the moment of, well, yeah. Cause you, you were like going around your apartment, like adding things up. Like she had cash hidden and you were like, <laughs> so she's like doing this like <laughs> equation and mine's just like on my phone, like I can see my account and how much is in there. And so she's like giggling. And yeah, she's like <laughs> adding things up. And it was like, what's going on? So I got um, all the numbers and I wrote them down. And, and I just remember like I felt blessed by the fact that I had saved that much. And mm -hmm. I know that you felt really oh, blessed. Absolutely. I remember you being like, oh, I just 
I feel like I should be bringing more into this. And I was like, no, no, yeah. no. Like, I've been saving for this time in my life. And, and you worked through college and avoided debt your whole life, which is extremely yeah. impressive. And so anyway, I just remember that moment and just how it was like a weight off our shoulders. Like, yes, we're going to be fine and we're still going to we're going to have a buffer, you know, like it's it's going to be OK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were able to kind of plan out, budget out things. And yes. and we we didn't want an expensive wedding. We kept our wedding very affordable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't because we had to, but because why not yeah. like save the money? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that, yeah. But it was cool to start talking about finances. I had been, in my past, I had always been pretty secretive about finances just because you just don't want anyone mm -hmm. with you for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And uh, it was fun to open up that conversation, which was kind of a way to ease into mm -hmm. some different aspects of marriage and to see where we fall on how to handle money mm -hmm. and um, yeah. making decisions for big purchases mm -hmm. and all that and so we just went through so much in such a short period of time yeah. that really cemented our peace and our faith that mm -hmm. we were meant to be together yeah um and so I just remember looking back from our wedding day to the day we got engaged and saying I didn't even know you then <laughs> like <laughs> compared to now mm -hmm. um and I even say the same i didn't even know you on our wedding compared to now so like yeah we continue to to know each other more but there was never anything we learned where we're like oh shoot <laughs> you know oh yeah no absolutely <laughs> thank god but Excuse yeah me. so i ended up taking a week off before the wedding and just kind of pampering myself finishing up mm -hmm. some things and we had done so much together planning and meeting with yeah. vendors and everything and yeah We'll say, yeah, too, like... We spent every day together, so... Oh, yeah. I mean, since after that first week of dating or whatever, once we had our first date, uh, I don't even know if there was... There was never back-to-back -back days, for sure, we didn't see each other. And after a certain time, I mean, it was every single day. Yep. Like, it wasn't like, yeah, okay, see you on Friday. Unless it was Thursday, then, then that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, we but saw each other every day after every day. about two weeks into dating yeah. or a week and a half into dating. No, no breaks. No breaks. <laughs> we didn't kill each other. Um, but yeah, like that planning and all that stuff, like we didn't do much on the week, like weekdays. Like there yeah. might be some calls or it like maybe a little calls. bit of independent research and things, but like it was, I would come over early. Usually it was at your house. I think we did a few, one or two times maybe at my place, but I usually highly it was recommend yours. this for couples. If you're planning a wedding fast, like designate a couple days in the week where you're doing this and then the other days just add it to a list don't even worry about it add it to a list yeah and address it later so we would work together on it in the weekend and then on mondays when he's at work i would make a few calls yeah because we had to call we couldn't email because we were so last minute we needed responses yeah, right away it wasn't like yeah a week later so i did a little bit more during the weeks here and there calls wise but mm -hmm. other than that almost everything could be accomplished on the weekend yeah. but they the were weekend. they were like full days i mean it was they were yeah i'll get to your place early and we were there for maybe not 12 hours but it was like a work day in one sense but it was a lot more fun because it was yeah. sitting and researching things and getting numbers and names and contacting people and sometimes getting returned down like the venue yeah. i think was the most stressful piece yeah we didn't There's have that else, pinned down nothing else really right away i think we set the wedding it? date before our venue was secured oh well, yeah i think a week or two before maybe so that was a leap of faith but we just felt peace about the date so we're like okay we're gonna do it <laughs> yeah um but yeah so I'm still surprised we got, we had two weekends off, I remember, mm -hmm. where we didn't deal with wedding stuff. Yeah. It's kind of a lot right at first, and then a lot towards the end, kind of. So we had yeah, a couple weeks in between there mm -hmm. where we were so more So let's see, I think you listed already what it was. We're planning for a wedding. We we're planning for a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. We were doing premarital counseling, which was going through some books and meeting with counselors, marriage counselors and things. Mm -hmm. And then um, buying two vehicles yeah so my the vehicle i got during that time was my parents so it was pretty simple i yep. was driving i actually rented for a couple months so i didn't even buy oh. it right away no we did live here for a while with the montero didn't we yes i forgot about that so we technically only bought one vehicle 
um, yeah, till after we got. I rented. Trip. I rented a new vehicle yeah. during that time. And then, all that, and then of course the house hunting process, which is a process in itself. Very much. So. And there's like a lot of things you don't really know unless you've gone through it. Yeah, um, weeks and weeks of piles of paperwork because we were yeah getting a mortgage as well, which is a huge process. Yep. Yeah. Uh, bank needed things and even on our honeymoon i was before our honeymoon uh, i'm like we want to do everything now like yeah. everything but then on our honeymoon they reach out for three different things and i have to oh, call my mom and, and and i had to look through old hopefully i had old tax returns <laughs> accessible on my phone like yeah. it was like that was a little stressful because yeah. we were like, well, if this doesn't work out, we, we have won't nowhere. have a home. Yeah, we don't have nowhere to go when we get back. <laughs> I mean, we can make it work, but it wasn't going to yeah. be ideal. Yeah, I get. we t still technically had, like, my, I had my apartment rented for a little while yet. But yeah, it would not have been, we're talking like studio, you know, like, not... I mean, people have done it, I know, but yeah. not ideal. But we each had a twin bed, so yeah. that was the biggest thing. was like, we don't, we won't yeah. be able to sleep in the same bed. Yeah. Uh, and our first we need our space when we sleep yeah which we found out yeah we just went for a queen right away by the way do that get or a queen king. right away or a king like when we stay at hotels or airbnbs where there's a king it's like oh it's oh, so nice luxury i will say though with my <laughs> pregnancy pillow the bed is tighter yeah that's true so without it it's pretty good for us but yeah, the pregnancy pillow takes more space oh yeah everybody we're pregnant yay yeah and oh, do any day you already know that <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, I think we pretty much covered everything. I just remember one more thing. I remember when your car kind of stopped working and we decided that you needed a new car mm -hmm. and you needed rides to work. Oh, yeah, that was a huge blessing. Babe. A good week or something. Yeah, well, I think it was only, you know, I think, I want to say you gave me three or four rides and then I slept at the school one night. He did. He which, slept at the school one night. I don't know if it's. Night. I think I can disclose that. I don't know. Like, they can fire me, and I don't know. Oh. I don't think there's anything illegal against it or about it, but it was just kind of, like, one of those things where it's like, I'm just going to sleep on this, You just like, didn't want to inconvenience table. anybody. No, I didn't. But and it's then, like, I don't know if, like, the principal or superintendent would have found out. I mean, he's a great guy. But I don't know if he yeah. would have been like, huh. cool, good for you. I think it would have been more like, <laughs> I don't know if we should do that, you know? Something yeah. like that. But, so... It only happened once, and then just one night I had to do it. We're like, my mom and I both are like, no, we we can't have that. Yeah, well, because <laughs> I I get to work very early. Um, I'm very usually early. the first. Yeah, I was. I'm usually the first person in the building in the school, and so she would get up super early. And she's not that you're like you you're not lazy, but you're just sleeping in more. Oh yeah, and, I would sleep till eight every day. Yeah, and I would get up at like four, and at times I would get up at three three thirty, so I can get in, go do my workout. I think I brought like, you in at like five or something. Yeah, and so she was like exhausted, and so she was <laughs> just tired, and she would drive me in, and then I'm worried about her driving back home already, like early in the morning. I don't know. So it's like, but it was such a blessing, and it was like this woman's amazing, and and it was kind of I don't know. It was my pleasure. I loved to see you. I loved to help you and stuff. Obviously, it wasn't easy. It wasn't like oh yes, I'm so excited to go outside yeah. at five a.m. <laughs> But no, like but it yeah, was. So I ended up borrowing that. That car. kind of stuff is rewarding for yeah. both. So, it was good, and I just remembered that. Is yeah, there anything only else? Weeks. Any particular memories during that time? I think we might have covered it all. And like he said, I love planning. Yeah. So, for me, it wasn't super stressful to have all this on my plate and to have to get things together and planned and. Mm -hmm. I had planned a lot of road trips and things with my girls in the past, so I kind of knew how to figure out the trip. We just talked about some things, and I booked yeah. the nights, and, you know. Mm -hmm. So it all just, it worked. And right. we worked together in a way that I had never experienced in a relationship, just smoothly and well. And I was like, guys, do not underestimate how important that is to hmm. easily work with your partner <laughs> yeah. because you will work together with your partner for, for the, rest the rest of, of your life. <laughs> so yeah, it really matters that you can gel and communicate and, and understand each other and not criticize each other in those things. And so, hmm. yeah, anyways, <laughs> pretty sure that covers it. So we'll probably yeah. watch this back like 
a few times in our life and Look laugh back. at our silly selves. Yeah. This is one of our last videos before I we have a child. Mm -hmm. And that will change our life forever. So this is kind of a time capsule to remember some moments before that change ever happened. Yeah. What? Nothing. <laughs> you'll you'll see when you edit this. Oh oh <laughs> nice. Alright. Well thank you so much for watching and have a great day.